No fancy intros today. Let's just break some stuff. Polymaker have launched a competition. Create the strongest hook and battle it out in a stress test against others to be crowned the champ. If you win, you get some amazing prizes consisting of 3D printers and a ton of filaments. Rules are simple. You have to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The hook cannot weigh more than 50 grams. It has to be an open-ended hook and it has to be printed in Polymax PLA. How the hook looks is irrelevant. As long as it's not a closed hook and it can fit two S hooks on each side for the stress test. But it doesn't mean you can't get creative. So today I want to give you a few pointers on how you could design your hook and what settings you can use in Idea Maker to strengthen the part without going over the weight limit. Now I'm no engineer, so designing a complicated hook for optimal strength based on topology is definitely not my strong point. For that though, I do recommend watching a couple of CNC kitchen videos related to this exact topic. What I have done instead is design three hooks for testing. The first design is the O-hook and it's very, very easy to design. So we're gonna go onto Fusion 360, we're gonna create a sketch, then we're gonna draw a circle. So we're just gonna do 40 millimeters, which is fine. Then we are going to offset that circle by 10 millimeters. Now, the inlet of the S-hook polymaker will use is 16 millimeters, and therefore you have to make sure that the S-hook will clip into that. 10 millimeters is more than enough. You can also do, I'd say 14, and then I'll give you a little tip in order to make it even better. So once you do that, you can select these two circles. Uh, you can control C and then V to copy and paste, and you can just simply move it to the side there. Then we're going to draw a line by pressing L, go from one point to that, over here to there, from here to there, there to there. And then what we want to do, I can just draw a quick box here, just like that. Then all we have to do is just finish the sketch, click on extrude, and we said 14, so what well, raise it 14 millimeters, and technically you have your hook. But just to make sure that the S hook will fit through there, uh, because it's you know it's it's 14 by 14, so diagonally it's going to be more. You can simply just go to chamfer, choose all these corners here, go down by two or three millimeters, there and you have your O hook. The S hook is slightly more complicated, but not too much. Once again, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll press L for lines. We're gonna take, we're gonna put a line over there and one over there. One from this edge to this edge. Next, we want to make sure that they are tangent. So we're gonna click on tangent up here, click on this circle and that line. So they're right perfectly there. And on this one, and that should be fine as well, but just in case, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. And then once again, we're just gonna draw a line there and another one over here. This is just to break it off. Once you finish sketch, extrude, and you have yourself a nest hook. However, in my case, just to be a bit creative and give you some ideas, because at the end of the day, uh, this is what this video is about. I wanna help everyone and give out a level playing field by thinking a bit outside the box. I wanted to create a self-locking loop. Since the rules state that it has to be um, open and cannot contain complete holes, this right here is acceptable. As you can see, um, because it does have a space over there, that's a one millimeter space. So technically it's open, it can be twisted, um, but what happens is when the strain starts pulling up and down, it locks onto itself, making it much more stronger. Now I printed three of each hook in order to test them out against each other. I use mostly standard settings in order to gauge the parts in weight, strength, and size. Now for the first tests in Idea Maker, I used 10% rectilinear infill and also used 2.5 perimeters and 0.25 millimeter layer height. 
Idea Maker has this variable perimeter settings. This will alternate perimeters from two to three constantly, allowing the infill to be printed between the perimeter and not just connected to it, making the part much stronger. I also took note here to see how much the estimated weight in Idea Maker is versus real life printing, which is extremely close with Idea Maker overestimating the weight by about 5%, so I just have to make sure that I stay within those limits. Once printed, it's time to get a bit of a benchmark. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a universal testing machine myself, but I did buy a handheld scale with a load capacity of 300 kilograms, some metal hooks, some tie-down straps rated at 350 kilograms, and a winch. I simply attached the winch with screws to a 60 by 60 one meter long piece of wood, wrapped the straps around it, then into the winch at one end and the hook on the other end. And in between is the handheld scale and some other hooks for easy attachment. Then I just simply clamped it to my bench. So first I needed to gauge the strength of each hook. So I did a solo test in order to see what the payload capacity is individually. I did the test twice in order to verify the result and sort of get an average payload weight. At this point, we had a clear winner, of course, and knew that the self-locking hook is the one that will need more tweaking in the slicer. But since I had made more hooks, I couldn't help but break stuff. So I did what Polymaker will do. I, um, I put them in a test against each other. One thing to note here, after all those breakages, you can see that the data is very consistent. Where the parts fail, it's almost a carbon copy on each one. So these are very good tests to perform in order to know where strength needs to be added within the slicer. Now I had enough samples that I can start to improve on. And since my hook weighed in at just 20 grams, there was a lot I can do here. Since we are strained with weight and nozzle size, we can just slap on a one millimeter nozzle to make it stronger. However, we need to look at what we have to work with. The first step is to insert a couple of modifiers in Idea Maker. Simply click on modifiers, then add modifier and choose a standard shape, in my case, a box. I scaled it up and placed two approximately where my hook um, had its failure points. Then go back to modifiers, click on the spanner and the plus sign in order to add your modifier data points. For now, I am simply going to include infill density, infill flow rate, infill pattern type and infill speed. The idea here is to beef up those two particular points with as much strength as possible. I could go ahead and just set the whole piece to the same setting as my hook is relatively light. However, the point here is to give you an idea of what you can do if your hook is heavier than mine and you just want to keep the weight down and the strength high. For the rest of the model itself, I increased the layer height to 0.3 millimeters. I increased the shells to 5.5, so they alternate between five and six shells. I lowered the speed for almost all parameters, especially the infill because it was relatively fast. I increased the flow rate to 100%, changed the top and bottom layer numbers to six, and I also changed the solid layers and top and bottom surface layers to concentric pattern. That was enough for the first alteration, which looked very good. Also, the weight was still at 34.7 grams, which was perfect, meaning I can tweak it further to make it even stronger should I need to. Once again, time to print and test out the payload capacity. At this point, to be honest, I am already completely blown away by the sheer strength of this part. But since I am way under the allowed weight, I might as well tweak it a bit further. And by tweaking a bit further, I mean overdo it, of course. So, removing the modifier boxes, increase the shells to 6.5. Not that it will make any difference as I will put the infill at 100%. I will increase the extrusion width to 0.5 millimeters, set the infill to be concentric as well, reduce cooling to about 75%, and make sure all speeds are down to around 40 millimeters a second. On the slicing preview, I can see that it's about 49.6 grams. This should be perfect, and hopefully it prints fine. 
Now, since the uh, the last testing that I did ended up with a few projectiles, I felt that at this point I, I need some visual protection because we are reaching a dangerous point with lots of forces and flying bits everywhere. So protective goggles it is. So here we have just over 250 kilos of payload. Quite impressive from modified PLA. Anyway, it's good though, as my custom testing jig can only withstand around 300 kilos and even at 250, the wood beam holding everything in place started buckling. So I'm, I'm good where it is right now. At some point, I will be building a stronger test jig. And if you want to see more of these dangerous tests, please, please feel free to let me know. Now I'll be taking part in this competition as well, of course, purely for the fun of it. And if I do happen to win, expect the prize to be given away on this channel, of course, as a thank you to all of you who follow me and watch my videos. So remember that you have until the 25th of September to submit your entry. You might also want to get going with it as only the first 128 hook designs will be accepted. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode because first, it was a lot of work. Secondly, I enjoyed myself immensely and I, it gave me so many ideas for more destructive things to do on the channel. So make sure you subscribe just in case you did not get the subliminal messaging. And as always, happy breaking, guys.